Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Dr. Pat. How are you today? I am fantastic. I feel great. I feel happy and I feel terrific. Oh, that's the best answer I've ever had on a podcast <laughs> interview. I love it. Uh, I used you. to, I really, really love it. I used to say to people, oh, this is a few years ago, and I had to stop it because it really annoyed people. When people said, how are you, Michael? I said, I'm outstanding. And they went, what? You can't be. I said, no, I am. I really am outstanding. <laughs> And they were, what, outstanding in your field? You're standing in your field or something that were taking the Mickey or the Michael Mm -hmm. or, you know, making fun of me. And I had to stop doing this. This was in a work environment. And uh-huh. then I think, well, I think you have the opportunity to live up your to your threat. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and that's a good kind of threat to have. You know, I'm awesome because if you're awesome, you take everybody along on the journey, also. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I, I'm outstanding as well. So thank you so much for such a great intro. <laughs> um, I'm really, really happy to have you on the podcast today. I'm super interested to hear about all the things that you do. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you. And would you like to share with us, please, your story, how you got to where you are today? Sure. Over to you, Dr. Pat. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if we have enough time <laughs> on, your, <laughs> on, your, on your broadcast. Um, I am a, uh, you know, I grew up in the Midwest. And one of the things that I value about being in the Midwest is I value um, the people who are there because I always found them very genuine. And, it, and I found that much more to the experience when I was traveling and that worked very, very well with, you know, for me and with me. When I was growing up, um, the lady next door to me had kids and I used to babysit for her. And, you know, it'd be the typical like neighborhood, you sit on each other's stoops, you know, and have a drink, ginger ale or something like that, something, some kind of poison that you didn't know was poison at the time. And she said to me, asked us girls, because there was a couple, uh, two girls, um, three girls that lived on the block, that was it, and us them were all boys. Uh, yeah. So you have, I grew up having male playmates. I didn't grow up playing with my Barbie. I grew up with footballs, baseballs, basketball, soccer, <laughs> you know, climbing Fantastic. fences, you know, polywogs in my back pocket and worms. Um, but, <laughs> you know, that's, and I thought that was absolutely normal. But at any rate, around 14 or 15 years old, this woman next door to me said, when you grow up, you're going to get married. You're going to have five kids and you're going to live in a house just like your parents. Wow. And I looked at that house. I had to share my bedroom with three other sisters. <laughs> and I was so happy when each one of them got married <laughs> because it gave <laughs> me much more space. So at that time, I had the whole um, my whole bedroom to myself, which my father built out because that's what they did in those times. They bought, you know, cookie cutter houses that the upstairs wasn't finished. Um, and then they built it out to me. So when I grew up, I had built in bookshelves and I had built in, you know, drawers and things like this. And I thought that was just normal because that's yeah. what, you know, we had. And I wasn't in, you know, you didn't really go into a lot of other people's houses. When you went to go play, you played outside, you didn't play inside. Yes. Yes. Um, now you play inside, you don't go outside. <laughs> so mm. we hugged a lot. We hugged a lot of trees. So, you know, but at any rate, when she told me that story about, you know, you, you know, you're going to get married. I said, no way. <laughs> I said, do you see that street out there? It was called business 75. I 75 they built later, which was the expressway like M5. Um, yeah. And, you know, I said, and that road went all the way down to Florida. And I said, one day I'm going to get on that road and I'm going to go South and I'm not coming back. Great. And so I went to college, you know, my father wanted me to go to college. I didn't want to go to college. So he took me to downtown Detroit, told me to get out of his car, said, hey, pick a house on the street since you don't want to go to college. You know, he said, I'll buy you a house on the street. Well, it was where the riot started. None of the houses were livable on that street anymore. He goes, I can get this really cheap and all the money that I save for you to go to college. You can, you know, now live on the street and you can live happily ever after. 
And I just looked at him. I said, I'll go to the college of your choice. And he went, okay. <laughs> put the car back and drive and drove away. And I just thought, good lesson, right? Even now I look mm. back at that as such a, a turning, those kind of turning points that happen. And so then when I decided to go South, I decided to go study to be a chiropractor. And because of my goal, right. you know, it's just like, I always was interested in science. I won second place when I was nine years old in the science fair. I always had that interest in the human body and how to be healthier, but I didn't know it. I played doctor. I was always the doctor. I was never the nurse. And even to this state, I did not have a patient die under my care. So right. And this is 38 years later, you know, people, you know, they, if they were under my care, they always got a stellar service. So, yes. you know, I go to chiropractic school to my father's dismay and I get on I-75 and I go south and I don't come back. <laughs> and so I met my husband there and who was French. We got married and we moved to Cape Cod, um, you know, and he did a little stint where he was in um, back in and we're friend, and then what we ultimately ended up on Cape Cod. Um, and so, um, and we started a practice there and we flourished. You know, we had a different mindset. We, you know, were there to like serve, love, and give. And the practice grew. We bought a practice that was existing, that was underserved, and we made friends fast and, you know, moving on. So, moving on you know, we get divorced. I ended up with the practice, which I eventually sold. And I moved to Boston and I wanted to learn more. Yes. And so what I did is I went to acupuncture college. I tried to go to school in the UK and looked oh, at wow. schools in Lo yeah, in London and Manchester. I got accepted to all of them, except they wouldn't let me do the herbal program and the acupuncture program at the same time. I said, but I wouldn't be working. <laughs> it isn't like I have to have a job, but mm. they only wanted you to learn one thing at a time. Yes. So that made that a no go. And so I went to school in Florida and, right. you know, and, and then, uh, and, but before that, you know, not to jump the ship too early here, before that, on the practice on Cape Cod, when I decided to leave, you know, what, what I found is that Cape Cod was constricting for me, you know, and mentally, because I felt very, if I went out to go buy groceries that normally should take me, if I going into the market to get something for salad for dinner and a piece of fish and, you know, whatever, a bottle of wine or whatever, you know, it would take me an hour and a half because <laughs> wow. I would run into people and go, Dr. Pat, what are you eating tonight? Oh, hmm, okay. Maybe I should, maybe I should get some fish too. Cause everybody knew you, they knew when you breathe. And my wow. office for kids, they would always, when, you know, my patients, when I had an office said, they used to call my office, that's Dr. Pat's house, <laughs> you know, oh. cause you could see it from, cause you could see it from the street. So, you know, and it, and it was, you know, fun. I got to help a lot of people. I had a lot of fun um, seeing people have transformation where they were crawling in and walking out or crawling in and still crawling out, but in less pain and then coming mm. in and being able to deal with those emergencies. But what I learned is that there was so much more to chiropractic and to health than just an adjustment. Yes. Because an adjustment certainly, and, and the thing is, is that our environment got so much more toxic. I thought there's mm. gotta be another way. And I wanted to add another tool. So I went to acupuncture school and that's how I ended up, you know, selling my office, moving to Boston and then going to acupuncture school. And I ended up, um, ending my acupuncture uh, training in Miami, Florida. Right. Um, and so, and it was the perfect year to go because that was the year that they got 17 feet of snow one season. <laughs> so I was really <laughs> awesome. I was so glad I missed that. Everybody always told me for winter time when I took my vacations from up there, you always know when to leave. <laughs> it's like, you have this like <laughs> uncanny sense that, you know, this is like doom, the snow was coming. And I had pictures, some people sent me pictures of the view from their window, their kitchen window, and it was just full of snow. You couldn't see yeah. out the window at all. Wow. It's like they're in their own igloo. And that, so at any rate, I went to Cairo, when I sold my business, went to Boston for 10 years, I was able to, I uh, modeled, I traveled a lot. Boston airport was 30 minutes away from me. On my 50th birthday, I still saw private clients up there. Um, and, but I, I start, like on my 50th birthday, I gave myself the gift of travel and I went someplace different for each month. Um, 
And which gave me a lot more, uh, you know, because I always think, you know, you ever want to know the world, you need to go to the environment and be part of the environment and not go with any, you know, pre conceive conditions of like it's going to be like this or it's going to be like that you know and I always felt like love to go where where do the locals go where do you guys go have coffee what do you talk mm-hmm. about you know mm-hmm. and things like that so it, I always had that inquisitive mind even from right. the child part from way back when so I decided to after acupuncture school everybody asked me what I was going to do and I said I'm going to retire <laughs> studying in <laughs> studying in Mandarin totally wiped my brain out. And I really needed maybe about two years, three years to recover from that level of burnout because it was so consuming, um, the knowledge that you put in um, and on top of everything else that you had. So that was a struggle for me to get past that and also to decide exactly where do I want to settle? You know, I be suddenly became indecisive. So anybody who is like burn out there, over exhausted, they're tired, they don't make good decisions. You know, yeah. so I certainly had my share for a couple of years of not making good decisions. And then I decided that, um, you know, I had a experience with uh, being in a visiting a friend of mine who was in Boston um, at the same time I was living there. And, and she was at this, um, you know, she was a VP of an insurance company. And so um, she came and stayed with me while she was there. And we had a lot of fun. But, you know, at some, she said, I got you a pass. She said, if anybody asks you who you work for, you have to say what's on the badge. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and but I did not look like your typical insurance person, navy blue suit. You know, I had a pair of like, you know, silver gold studded boots, you know, on and my like, you know, street cape, you know, as I was walking around with sunglasses and incognito. Um, and so, uh, but I went in and, and I had this really interesting encounter with this person who was rather on the psychic side. Um, and he, he said to me, you're going to, you know, you're going to write a book. And mm-hmm. I said, I don't think so. I said, who'd want to listen to whatever I have to say? And he said, no, you don't understand. He said, you are going to write a book. What you write has the ability to help masses of people, you know? And he's, and I just said to him, I don't think so. I I think you're wrong on this one. I just (laughs) got done retiring. I'm not going to do that. I go, I don't, I don't think so. And so, you know, I was, you know, every once in a while I would like, you know, have an, a, a client that was up there from my office from, you know, the Cape and we would ch- chit chat. And, you know, then we go like, you know, I've got something going on. This de- new doctor that bought your practice, he doesn't know his right hand from his left hand and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, do this questionnaire and let's see where you've got a glitch at. And so we would do the questionnaire and it's like, Hey, how come you didn't answer this part of the questionnaire? I didn't understand it. I don't understand why you're asking the same question twice. I said, well, because in this sector, how it relates to how you answer it with these questions means something different than over there. I said, it's like studying Chinese. You can have one Mm. character and it has eight meanings. So, um, it, that gave me the idea of like, why can't I take my questionnaires and simplify them in English language? So that they're not medical, some of there's some medical text you can never, you know, condense None. into something more simplistic. But what I did is I took the questionnaire and I rewrote it in, um, you know, in English so that an 11 year old person could understand it. Yes. And then I wrote like, well, how do you take the test? You know, and, you know, and the, the purpose of the questionnaire was to see where your health glitch is, where your weakest link is and where your strongest link, and then be able to look at what your health pattern is so that you can know exactly where to spend your time, energy and money. Right. And so what this book does that's behind me, why are you sick, fat and tired? And that's how that was born. Mm. Um, that's one part of it. Um, And, um, you know, why are you sick, fat and tired, you know, um, also comes from, you know, I had this when I was living in Boston, I would go out and have lunch sometimes with friends. And um, I had the life of Riley at that time. And I would sit in post office square with the iced coffee and watch people at lunchtime. And I would look at people's faces, I would engage people in conversation. um, And then from engaging those people in conversation, I would like, you know, say, hey, have you ever thought about doing this? I said, you don't look like you're happy. Are you, you've got something going on? I was like, uh-huh. let's talk about it. 
I mean, like, look at, it's the perfect third, you know, like the middle seat syndrome in a plane, the person in the middle always gets all that dumb stuff on. And so I would see people and people started recognizing me saying like, Hey, hi, how you doing? You know? And they go, you always got a smiley face, you know, it's just like, it's always the pleasure to see you. So when I had this one experience one time where I saw this guy coming up and he was really sweating profusely and, you know, I'm looking, Hey, I said to him, are you okay? And he said, I'm fine. I've got to get to work. I'm late. You know, and it was like really intense. This is in the financial district. So you can imagine. Yes. Um, so I said to the guy, um, I said, I think I said, let me take a good look at you. And I said, I think you should go to the hospital. And he said to me, um, you know, I've got to go to work. I said, yeah, I get it. I said, but I want you to to be at work and be in a good mood. And I want you to be at work and be healthy. I said, I go, your sweat is pretty greasy, you know? And have you always sweated like that? He goes, greasy. I said, yeah, greasy. I take, I go touch it. You know, I didn't touch it, you know? And I said, it's kind of slimy, right? And he said, Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, you know, I said, you have, is your heart pounding? You know, a little bit. And um, he said, because you seem out of breath to me. I said, I think you should go to the hospital just to get checked out. You know, yeah. and I said, seriously, taxi, threw him in a taxi, take him to Mass General, leave him off at the front door, you know, and I, I guess he did what I, I told him to do because about two, three months later, I was walking through the same area again. And he said to me, are you the girl that told that pushed me in the cab? <laughs> I said, I don't <laughs> think I pushed you. I said, but I did kind of like, you know, because I was really concerned about you. He said, you've got a good eye. And, um, and I said, why? And he said, you know, when I went to the hospital, I was, they took me in front of everybody else. I said, so your heart was gone, huh? And, um, cause I remembered that part about him, but I remember him like, you know, he looked much better than the last time I saw him. Yeah. So I just said, I'm so glad I said that you had a good outcome, you know? And I said, that's awesome. You know, and the, you know, and so he just said, thank me. He never asked me what I did. Like, how did you know that, you know, or anything yeah, like this? Yeah. So, um, you know, at the same time, I read an article and the article I read was from the CDC and the CDC doesn't do small studies. They do big, large studies. And yeah. they said in the study that out of the 212 dangerous chemicals that they tested for all of them, not some of them, all of them were in every subject tested. Whoa. And I had that, like I had, yeah, I had that like, oh my God moment. And I said, They, I said, these chemicals are everywhere. They're in your water supply. They're in the air. So Mm. I go, how do people get sick? They get sick from toxins, from the food you eat, the water you drink, the air that you breathe, the chemicals you use for gardening, the chemicals you use in your house to clean. You've got to read labels, you know, and you got to know what the side effects of those things are that you can't pronounce. Um, So I said, I go, this is not okay. And, And not only that, it was making them sick. They didn't know they were getting sick. Because when you get sick, you don't think, right? You know, and so um, I just decided one day when I woke up, I went, that's got to stop, you know, and I'm going to mm-hmm. go back to work on a mission to give people information so that they can make better decisions. You know, even if I always go on the rule of 80, 20, even if 20% of what I say is true, it warrants you enough to have the red light go on and to pay attention. Yeah. But there's a lot more than 20%, I can guarantee you. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I said, but I always go on the 80, 20% rule for like a, a many things. They do that in, you know, as a statistician also. Yeah. Um, because I think that people, when people become aware of their environment, they can make better decisions moving forward. Mm. So what the book does for you, it organizes your systems in your body so you can see where that weakest link is and you can see where the strongest link is and then you can say how do i address that and how does this organ system relate to those other organ systems because it's like a swiss watch where if one organ system is slow or sluggish then it affects all the other organ systems like from the muscle to the liver, from the liver to the muscle type of thing. And the unfortunate thing is that when people have those toxins and they accumulate, you know, they get stored in the liver can't handle getting rid of them by putting them back into either the kidney bladder toilet or for the intestinal tract toilet. Then what happens is they get stored in blood, brain, bone, and fat, and they always go to your weakest link. 
So it's, it's imperative to be able to stay on top of that. That's why I tell people you can get the digital version. You definitely want to get the, the, the paper version so that you have hard copy and you see it on your bookshelf and then check in with yourself every, you know, four to six months. So I used to just coach after I left my practice and, yeah. you know, and consult. But where I shifted is I shifted into um, teaching a thing for five pillars. And the five pillars are, you know, proper diet, nutrition, proper exercise, proper sleep, a positive mindset and positive mental attitude, and a properly functioning nervous system, which really relates to proper posture and the biomechanics and structure is function. Because when you lose your structure, there's pressure on the nerve root. And if the brain controls and coordinates all functions of the body, you don't want that. You want to have mobility and you want to have the pressure off any of the nerve roots. So I teach that as a basic premise. Um, going forward, like how to be stronger than medicine. And that's something that has to have, a, have an understanding in order to have breakthroughs that people need to have. Yeah. So what I discovered is people hate to talk about their health and they don't want to do anything about their health until they're hitting a brick wall, they're hitting the ceiling, they're doing something and all of a sudden they can't do it anymore. Like they used to walk 18 holes of golf and playing nine holes of golf is so stressful for them that they have to go home and take a nap afterwards. And, yes. and so, and a lot of people just aren't hydrated enough. So there are a lot of little components to each one of those pillars that I found that are important. But I think one of the most important ones above and beyond having a properly functioning nervous system, which the definition of health in Merriam-Webster's dictionary says that is a condition of when the organs are functioning 100% of the time. We don't know that. No. So one of the things is, it's like, you know, and, and it's also more than just, you know, being able to live your life. It has that physical and emotional and environmental component so that mm. you can really engage, you know, on a mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and social level. So, you know, I said, you know, I stopped coaching per se. And what I do is I mentor and coach right. because what I found is, is that, you know, when I go to a doctor, I don't want to go to a fat doctor, no. you know, and I, it's just like, I want to go to a doctor that is healthy and does what he said. He tells you to do it. He does, you know, he does the same thing. When someone told me I was with a pediatrician one time and I asked him, you know, we're at some function. I said, do you vaccinate your kids? <laughs> and he said, no. And I said, you vaccinate other people's kids? I said, yes. And I said, don't you think you're living a lie? He didn't like me. <laughs> but I, I just thought, like, you should practice what you preach, you know? Yes. And so if you wouldn't vaccinate your kids, then what's wrong with the vaccines? Yeah. You know, and it, it, is there something specifically wrong? Not all of them are perfect by any means, as we have seen in the last, specifically the last two years. Yes. Um, you know, and I won't even go down that rabbit hole. But what I realized, the first thing that's important to really dive in with people is how to get the, you know, a mastery or the mastery mindset um, really set. Because when you have the positive mental attitude and you have the proper mindset, then you can do your life with mastery. You can do health and wellness with mastery. You can have better relationships. So I started mentoring and coaching in those areas more exclusively in, you know, in 2022, you know, because I found people who have, you know, um, when I worked with people who um, I'm, you know, when we would do the traditional coaching thing that I, I originally did, there was always a point that things like came to a halt, like in five weeks, four weeks, there was always something that day that was really edgy and bugging someone. I said, forget about the labels today. Tell me what's really going on with you. Yeah. And so, you know, and it was like, it was inevitably something about that came up from their childhood that they never dealt with before, mm. but it was, it, but it keeps on repeating again and again and again. And you can like, well, why am I hitting the ceiling? Why can't I be successful at work? Why can't I accumulate money? You know? Yeah. So what I do now, you know, cause I approach those, but I approach those after I started teaching the nutrition component, because you cannot think better, feel better and move better unless you are putting quality food in your body, almost like food is medicine. Yeah. You know, and the important part about that is too, is that by working with that on that level, 
you know, there's, you know, people who have like, you know, when you're looking at behaviors, some behaviors are almost like addictive type of behaviors, yes. you know, and you're thinking like, why do I keep on picking the wrong guy? Why do I keep on picking the wrong woman? You know, or whatever, whatever your situation is. And why do when I start working out, you know, I can't get past, you know, five days and then I'm, you know, mm. eating wrong. I'm moving wrong. I'm not sleeping well. You know, um, I, I have all these other components and it goes back to having the um, mastery over your mind in your thoughts, you know, in your deeds so that you can, Matt, when you master that, you can master anything. You can be successful in business. So I always say positive mental attitude plus positive mindset um, plus wellness initiatives, which are specifically the first three things on that the pillar of, of those five pillars that I talked about before, the diet, the nutri um, diet, nutrition, the exercise and the sleep, specifically those plus the positive mental attitude, because when you tell your body it's supposed to be healthy on the subconscious level, it does it you know, and, and it has a better way to express health better. So yeah. that's what I teach. That's what I do now. So that's why I chose to go away from coaching because coaching, I've never met a coach that mentored and, you know, who said like, Hey, do this, don't do that. You know, it's like, Hey, you want to know this? Like I can tell, I always say, here's your five pillars. You know, you've got to give me something to work with. You got to go back to basics. You got to know your foundation. Those numbers count, especially yeah. in medicine numbers count. Um, and so taking it from there and moving it forward and then piecing the pieces of the puzzle together so that you know your base foundation and you know what you're working with and you know where you've got to work in order to be successful mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, whether at work, whether at home, whether in relationships, whether at, even at play, you know, doing something fun that you like to do. You yeah. don't want something ruminating in the back of your head, like, oh, I, I don't deserve this. And you're thinking, why am I thinking that thought? And where does that fear come from? As you're either yeah. on the side of, you know, manifesting abundance and positivity, or you're on the side of deficit where you're in doubt, fear, worry, and blame, you know, and in fear, even by its acronym of self, this false experience is appearing real. What fear is it? And if yeah. so, let's get let's put that on the chopping block. Let's deal with it and then put it in a safe space. So it never bothers you again. So if you can take that fear or whatever it is and address it, then you, when you put it in a safe space, it isn't like something's going to come along. that's going to trigger it again, but when it triggers, you kind of go, Oh, I know what that is. And you can make a conscious decision with your conscious brain to create a positive experience around it. So it's stored in the mammalian brain. So the lizard brain, which is the primitive brain, shuts up. Yeah. So that's why you say affirmations like early in the morning and affirmations late at night is because the lizard brain is at its weakest moment, you know? And so when you say that and you can, if you can control the verbiage that the lizard brain uses you know, then that's perfect. Like for instance, the lizard brain's great if someone's cutting you off on the highway and you've got to slam on your brakes. You want the lizard brain to do that because that's your survival instinct. Yes. But it's very, yeah. very, you know, it's, and it's all those things that you learn from childhood that get stored as memories that pop up because it tells you how that circumstance should, how you should behave. So for people who are in business, that is the holy grail of marketing. But you mm. want to take people from that pain experience and that memory, and you want to transition them into the same experience, but having a positive outcome. Yes. You know, and that, and that part of it for me, is like very cool. Cause I, I love how that all pieces together and it's all contingent on your wellness initiatives and what's going on in your brain. Cause if you don't mm. give your brain good thoughts and good deeds, then it doesn't, you know, it will feed off of more good thoughts and good deeds you know, and it will lead you in a better intuitive way to a, a place that's a better destiny for yourself. So I help people get there, you know, by looking at, um, you know, like who you are, where you want to go and what are the pieces of the puzzle? Because you can see the branches, you know, yes. and then you start going down the trunk and you're going into the root going like, well, what happened when you were five years old? You know, why, why did yeah. you store that memory? Like where, and then there's a technique and, um, 
and acupuncture and also in China, uh, not Chinese medicine, acupuncture, and also an ac a chiropractic that I learned from one of my mentors in chiropractic that really can zone in on exactly where you store that and take that messaging off of there so that organ system doesn't falter and you start getting sick and start expressing signs and symptoms that relate back to that. Because sometimes what you got isn't necessarily what you have. That's what one of my mentors always used to say when he first said it. I went, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> but, you know, when I was a student, I was like, I was like, whoa, you know, but as I followed him, you know, I always looked for what the root cause was like, what's really going on with you? And luckily, God gave me the gift of being very intuitive to be able to listen in between the lines. My ex-husband can tell you that <laughs> for sure. I would say, what did you say? That doesn't make sense. So my premise of my why is I like to, to solve challenges. And yes. I think outside the box. You know, sometimes I'm very um, way out there thinking out of the box because I feel like I have the ability to step outside of it and I can look in and I realize there's no walls to a box not for no. those kind of boxes. And then what I do is I make sense of it, the challenge, and I make it simple, easier, better, faster, and quicker. So you can get unstuck and get, mm. you know, and put those in a proper place. And then the idea is, you know, and the reason why I mentor is because, um, you know, because my, uh, that is my um, how and my uh, what is trust. And because I walk the walk and I talk the walk and I walk it with you, I don't leave, I always leave enough cushion on the end of a coaching or mentoring call when, you know, so that if something comes up, which inevitably it only comes up at the end, it doesn't come up in the beginning or the middle part, usually it comes yes. up at the end, that there's a cushion to deal with it. Mm. So that when you get off the telephone call, you're not in, you're feeling like you're in a state of crisis. Yeah. You know, or the coaching call, you know, and I'm very, very, you know, I'm very, very much like that. I was like that in my office. I never said no to anybody in pain. And somebody said to me like, well, what do you do? And I said, everybody accommodates for it. Everybody knows that if they were ever in pain, they would want to be able to be taken care of and not yeah. have to wait two weeks in order to get there. And I said, that doesn't work for me. It never worked for me in my office. And I never had anybody um, so, you know, succumb to those kind of like, you know, rigid rules, like, I'm sorry, go home, put ice on it and see me in two weeks. You yeah. know, I, then you're practicing yeah. medicine, you're not practicing healing. Yeah. And that's how I did my stuff. Brilliant. So, so and that's how, and that's how I'm at where I'm at now, you know, yeah. also is that, you know, how that it ended up evolving because um, I, it's just delivering it in a different fashion for people who I can actually physically contact. I will go to their house. I'll help them empty their pantry, you know, and then, or, or go shop grocery shopping with them, you know, mm. and show them like the reason why, um, you know, if, if you buy this, you know, you're buying it from a can that's toxic, that has BPHs in it that are carcinogenic. You know, the thing, the things that plug into a wall that has the smelly stuff in it, unless they're organic and they come from mm. a natural source, you know, those have a tendency that because they're the, the respiratory part of it, of inhaling them and they're associated with certain types of cancer. Thank you. I'm going to interject wow. and give you a little bit of a rest. I have so many questions. I can't remember them all. But I have a very <laughs> a few I have a few important ones. And okay, that is, shoot. <laughs> so your distinction around coaching and mentoring, I think, is a really important one that I just want to unpack a little bit because not everybody understands what the difference is. Um, you did allude to it in terms of how you explained it, but I'd like you to explain it, give a slightly longer explanation, because I think it's really important for the work that you do that I, I want to make sure the listeners understand the difference. Sure. You know, when, when you coach or somebody coaches, I've had coaches before. And I said, well, I'm also looking for a mentor. I don't do that. Then you're not for me. And yeah. because a mentor or a coach will have you come up with your own solution for your problem. Yes. Like, you know, I want to lose weight. Well, what can you do? You know, and they won't give you anything like, you know, do this, do that, you know, blah, 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 
you know, they will tell you to like, you know, well, what program do you want to use? Well, how are you going to implement that? And when are you going to implement it? And I, I can hold you accountable for that, you know, for that program, but they let everything lay upon you in order yes. to go from point A to point C. A mentor as a mentor in, in areas that, you know, I you know, like no trust. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would say the mentor tells you they're leaders and they lead by example. Mm. So they're saying like, you know, when I was on a diet, you know, and I wanted to lose weight, I realized that when I did intermittent fasting before it was even called intermittent fasting, that that was the best way for me to control my weight. It wasn't even you even, it wasn't even like the word diet ever entered your head because, you know, it, you wanted to do it um, on the basis of like, you know, this is how my, you know, this is how I nurtured myself through the day. And so, you know, I would get up in the morning as an example for that. And I would get up, have coffee, you know, um, or tea and, you know, and then be concentric with my thoughts, do an affirmation. Um, and then I would go to work and then I would work from that point in time. And I would have always have hydration. I always had water, um, you know, at my office. And then I would, um, then, uh, factor into lunchtime when I was finished, I would go eat, come back, lay down for 45 minutes. But what I ate at lunchtime, I never ate rice, pasta, or bread at mm. lunch. I always had things that were vegetable based um, in, you know, indoor protein with it. I lived on Cape Cod at the time. So there was a lot of fish and yes. you had a lot of choices for that. So I had fish and salad at lunch. Um, I would sometimes go home and cook with rare um, but I always had something, there was a great health food store that was right near there. That was, you know, you could easily get something to eat um, in or go, you know, someplace. But I, I was always aware of when I faltered from that, I was tired in the afternoon and I wasn't mm. as mentally sharp. Even if I went back and took a 30 minute nap, which I always tried to do unless yeah. I really ran late. So, you know, I would tell somebody that's like, you know, I need to have more information about you. You know, so let's do this questionnaire in this book, for instance, or let's do the metabolic questionnaire that tells me if you're a candidate to do a detoxification, because I've done them, you know, yeah. and I've done many of them. I, you know, when somebody wants to try a product, I usually try it first, or I take a really close exam of it before I tell somebody what I think about it. You know, yeah. I don't just say like, oh, that looks good. <laughs> Go ahead and try it, you know, no. and, but I don't do that. So, but a coach would never do that. No, they're not, okay. they're not in that invested a mentor is more invested in your outcome. Yeah. And it's something usually that they've already done themselves. So when you can combine the art of being a mentor with the art of being a coach, and you can combine that, we've got to come up with a new word. So if any of your listeners have a new word for what that would mean, that would be great. Did that explain it? Yeah, perfect. Well Thank you very okay. much. Yeah, that's really, I think it's really important for people to understand that fully because it's something you know, that people can get confused about and mm -hmm. they don't, people hear the, the word coach and they really don't, you know, because the word coach is now used in so many different ways. You know, there's a sports coach, there is a, you know, a wellness coach, there is a life coach, there is, there are so many areas and it does, it can get confusing. So my other question is, first of all, I admire your work. I, I, you know, I'm cheering you on. I, I, I want so many more people to hear your story and to learn about this and what they can do about improving their lives. And at the same time, I also know it's a massive task against the trillion dollar pharmaceutical industry where everybody wants a quick fix. They just want to swallow a tablet and solve their wellness issue how do you combat wrong word but how do you persuade people that really they're just making their body more toxic by taking medication rather than going a different route and looking at you know the organ systems that you talk about improving their diet hydration exercise and all of those other things instead of just swallowing the pill well, um, first, <clears throat> let's just clarify one thing. 
Um, when you say that, the first thing that came in mind, something that I teach is these nine dots. So if you had nine dots, I would have had a picture up that we could have maybe gone to, but nine dots in the picture of the nine dots, you can only draw four lines. And the four lines that you draw on the nine dots, you know, usually comes up, it's almost like an arrow. Like when you come up, let me go the other way. When you come up like this, you know, and then you have that triangle sitting on top of that line, those, mm. that will connect all four dots. You can come up to the middle to the top and then come down and then come across and then come back this way. In order for the solution for that puzzle, you must go out of the nine dots. Those nine dots represent everything you know to be true to date. So when people have that crash, when people hit that, hit the fan, you know, and they hit a wall, they always go back to the lizard brain. Yes. For support. So that lizard brain is the one that tells you to get out of the way for the saber tooth tiger, but it doesn't necessarily lead you in the direction that's prosperous for you. It's the one that tells you you're not good enough. It's the one that tells you you make bad decisions. It's the one that tells you you don't deserve to have good relationships, a good life, et cetera. And so it's the one that you always want to be kicking off. But if he tells you there's a saber tooth tiger in front of you, you better believe him, you know, and pay attention to it. Um, yes. But the idea of those nine dots is that there is an infinitesimal amount of possibility in your life, you know, and in order to do that, you've got to go out of the box of what you know and realize that there's just no walls in the box. And right. that when you start looking at solutions, you can go out. So there's times, you know, when you're looking at the suggestion that you gave about the big pharma, you know, and the such, it's like, there's a lot of natural medicines. Most medicines came from a naturopathic remedy or herbal remedy first before they made it in pharmaceuticals. The difference is a lot in farm, like, you know, years ago and people who are herbalists can tell you is that, you know, the concentrated dose of that, they were able to make it synthetic, which your body doesn't recognize synthetics anyways, like never eat margarine, synthetic um, over butter. But if you take those, you know, natural substances, you might have to take a lot more of them in order to get the same effect that one pill in the pharmaceutical industry will give you. So, and you're thinking like, well, I've got to get to the end of the line. Well, you could have to get to the end line. You might have to have something that you have to finish, but unless you're in crisis, you know, where you are on, you like, you know, it's like, you're thinking like, what do I have to do next? You know, then you have to weigh out whether or not where your mindset's at. So it always goes back to your mindset because you ask, what has your health been like in the last two years? You know, and just like, and you want to get in the thing, I want a healthy lifestyle. But as soon as like crap hits the fan, you jump in the line of pills and surgery. And mm -hmm. so and if you look at the analogy of um, the carpenter and the fireman principle, when your house is on fire, you call the fireman and they come in, they bust through your windows, they bust through your doors and they spray everything down and they ruin everything that is on the inside. They represent Western medicine. Yeah. And when they can't figure it out, what they do is they do surgery and that's the hose. You know, mm. the hosing and the axes, I mean, the axes are surgery and the hose is the medication. And then they tell you, didn't I do a good job? So if they take your gallbladder out and you still have gallbladder problems, it's just like, they're going like, well, I don't know what's wrong. You know, it might've been better. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's just like, sorry, you're, you know, you're going to have to live with this. You know, it's just about your age, you yeah. know, and that makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up, you know? And so when you hear things like that, you know, I always say like, you know, when you jump ship, what was your fear? Yeah. What is the fear? It really is it? you know, you want it done immediately, you know, or, you know, or, or, or the such, like, for instance, you know, I'm in my sixties, I have had, as far as medications go by pill form, maybe three times in my life, I had antibiotics. You know, I take no medications. Um, and I always look at like, what can I do to keep my foundation strong, my immune system stellar, so that if I do get something, my body's going to go, yep, whoop, invader, let's get rid of it, you know, yeah. and let my body do what it's supposed to do naturally. But if you have been poisoning yourself and eating bad foods and having bad lifestyle, not getting enough sleep, having bad thoughts, then 
you it's just like, then you have like, well, well I got to do something. So maybe as an emergency type of situation with the idea of it not being for long, because Western medicine never goes back to the root. In Chinese yeah. medicine, there's probably about four or five different type of diagnoses that relate to high blood pressure. And when you fix those root problems, the blood pressure normalizes. Yeah. And so if you like, you can take a pill, you might have to take a pill, you know, mm -hmm. of some sort or a pharmaceutical drug for something. But the idea is not to do it forever because what happens is the next pill, you have side effects from that and they give you a pill for that. And you have side effects from that and they give you a pill for that. Pretty soon, you don't know what the hell you're taking. I had a patient one time who was taking 17 types of medication. I said, you take every one of these 17 types of medication, you write them down, you take them to the pharmacist and ask them if there's any counterindications, which you should know, and any, and any like, you know, indication that you are not a candidate for them. That's absurd to be taking that much, you know, that many types of medications, you know, so keeping it simple and someone goes, oh, it's my DNA. Well, it can't be your DNA. You know, you can say it because like, you know, if you eat exactly the way your parents ate, more than likely you will have exactly what your parents and your grandparents ate. Here's the scoop. A hundred years ago, and even in the early fifties, before they started doing genetic modification, they would take those foods, you know, it's just like when they started altering them, your body no longer understands them. I took, mm. I was in a grocery store a year ago and I had two stalks of broccoli and what them was organic and the other one was inorganic you know the gmo toxic stuff yes. which is always sprayed by the way they always spray glycophosphates on vegetables and fruits before they go to market and you're eating them even if yeah. you wash them off they're, they're they stay there um and so i had these two broccolis in my hand this woman came up she said you look very serious while you're looking at the broccoli i said well i'm kind of like equating them like dating and she <laughs> said dating are you dating broccoli now? And I said to her, I go, no, 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 I'm not dating broccoli. I said, but I think you're like dating because we always find the guy who's fun, wants to go out, eat, drink, be merry, two o'clock in the morning, you're still dancing and you get home, like New Year's Eve, that's fine. Um, you, you know, get home and then you crash and you got to get up and be at work at eight o'clock and he gets to sleep, mm. you know? And so it's just like, and you keep on wearing and tearing at your body. Then you have the broccoli that is organic. And that's the kind that my parents grew, you know, on their, you know, small area where they grew fruits and vegetables and the tree in the backyard kind of thing. And on that piece, you know, you have the broccoli that's organic that, you know, wants to make sure you're water walking fed, wants to make sure you're cozy when you're sleeping, that you get enough sleep, that you get enough nutrition and that you're happy you know, and so, and that you can think well, and you feel great. You know, I go, that's the organic broccoli. So oh, she looked that. at me and she said, and she said, which one is the organic broccoli? And I said, the one in my right hand, she reached over and grabbed it. She goes, go get your own. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 we, and we just had this really big laugh about it, you know, but it's true. You know, when you're looking at like foods, you got to look at food as your friend and food as medicine. So when I eat this, and if I'm eating things that are in not the right um, like combination chemically with another like vegetable. Like I always use the example of having a, like a 10 ounce steak and having a big Idaho potato. If you eat that together in the same meal, you will, it will sit in your stomach and putrefy because it's really hard for the body to digest those because one's alkaline and one's acid. So you need to have more things that uh, complement the acid portion of the beef, which would be green leafy vegetables, tomatoes, big leafy salad, you know, and, you know, that type of thing. And then, you know, having the portion size for the potato, it's, you know, the actual portion size for a 10 ounce steak probably would be like, maybe like a half a cup, mm. you know, maybe a little bit more than that, you know, but right around a half a cup, those Idaho potatoes are over a pound. That's yeah. well more than a, than a cup. So when you, if you look at like how to take the things and push them together so that they make better sense, which I teach people to do, then it's like, you can go out, you don't have to have a diet book. You don't have to be on a diet. No. You know, and you can, you know, if you call like, okay, so let's do intermittent fasting. Let's just miss breakfast. Even though they say it's the most important meal of the day, you know, it's just like, you can have a coffee. Um, David Asprey makes a coffee called Bulletproof Coffee that will carry you over into your lunchtime. 
you know, and then start, you know, and then spread that out so that you can find your best number, whether it's 12, 14, 16, or 18 hour, you know, like intermittent, what they call intermittent fasting. But for me, that was, a norm, that was such a normal way to live. I never, I think I should have coined it and trademarked it like years ago. Absolutely. But that's how, but that's how you get people from the, um, you know, like from the, 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 that mindset where they stay in the line. I have a great cartoon yeah. that says pills and surgery, and it has lifestyle and the lifestyle lines empty. And everyone's the, the lines absolutely crowded, you know, for the pills and surgery and yeah. because we get scared. And if we can take the fear off of that and get better information and ask, why is that? How did that happen? What do we do now? What are my, what are all my choices? Not some of the choices. Yeah. Cause you can eat foods that are not good for you. I knew of a woman that had um, blood in her stools for 10 years. And they finally said, we can't do anything else for you. We have to take it out you know, yeah. and, yeah. you know, sh and give you oh, a no. bag. Oh, no. So at it's any rate, and what ended up happening though, in the good story part of that, she said, no. And she went and found somebody who understood more of what she was doing. And she found out that she can't eat avocados that when she did, it made her intestinal tract, um, have inflammation wow. and, uh, and bleed. And so a year later, after she made the decision to leave the medical doctor, she went in for a colonoscopy because she was curious and that in her colon was perfectly healthy. Just by removing one food, you know, but it's just like, and there's a way to figure out, you know, what is that one food, you know, that is yes. the causative, yeah. that is a root issue. Brilliant. Yeah, I always had the saying, by the way, I haven't had any sort of pharmaceutical medication. I must be coming up for 20 years, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and the We're only twins. thing. <laughs> yeah and the only thing that i might have taken at the time when i did was like a headache tablet or whatever but mm -hmm. of course i knew the headaches were for different reasons like eating the wrong mm -hmm. foods drinking the wrong drinks and and stuff like that so well 80 85 percent of headaches are metabolic in nature so when somebody has a headache i always ask them what did you eat you know, mm. or what do you, what's your tendency of what you eat, you know, and then, you know, like there's ways to get rid of headaches a little bit faster. And, but a lot of them are metabolic. That's why, you know, anybody who's listening on this on your show could get easily connect with me to get a, um, a metabolic questionnaire, which would yeah. tell you some really good information. Thank you. Yeah. I, I have a funny story about headaches. Um, for the last few years, instead of going to some kind of sunny vacation and eating and drinking the wrong stuff, uh, my wife and I, we went to, we go away to a health spa for like six days, seven days. And we eat the right stuff. We have yoga every day. We do exercise, swimming. We eat all the right foods and we come back revitalized. But for some reason, a few years ago, I, I gave up coffee like years ago, back in 2002, even before that, I started drinking coffee again and I was enjoying it. And, you know, you mentioned something about intermittent fasting. We had a, we had a guy who was doing some uh, house improvements and he was doing that intermittent fasting and drinking coffee. I went, I'm going to try this. And I started drinking coffee again. Anyway, no problem. I was really enjoying the coffee again and having not a huge amount, but, you know, say four or five cups a day. When we went away, not that there wasn't any coffee in the room, but my, my drink became peppermint tea or mint tea. And I wasn't drinking any coffee. In about two day two or day three, I was getting these huge headaches, but I never related it back to the coffee i remember when i first gave up coffee i was getting these huge huge headaches anyway this first year the headache passed after about two or three days it really caused me to be inca incapacitated the following year same thing happened and it wasn't until year three which was like last year that we went you know what it was it was the damn coffee you go to a health spa, you kind of forget the routine. You're not, you're in a bedroom, you're not in the routine. There's a coffee machine, but you don't use it. You haven't got your instant coffee. And 
I was getting these huge headaches. Literally, I couldn't move. I was like, the migraine was ridiculous. Ever since I, then I went, that's it. No more, never. And I switched back to my minty and never had another headache since. <laughs> it was incredible. Well, the coffee, the, the chemicals that a lot of coffees are sprayed with affect how the liver functions. So really? when... And so like, if you ever want to lose weight, they always used to say, have a cup of coffee about 45 minutes before you actually go exercise and it will improve it. But you have to really buy high quality coffee that doesn't yeah. have mold in it because you could easily have been desensitized from the mold and the, not necessarily the caffeine. Cause so I have right. that same experience if I'm traveling and I can't get the regular coffee that I have. Um, and then um, I'll have a little bit, people have a tendency to have those headaches, but all of those headaches are from the liver. So that just tells me perhaps your liver could use a little bit of detoxification yeah. so that you can, you know, so that it can function better, you know, and it depends upon like, you know, how much coffee somebody, you know, drinks um, yes. that they get accustomed to, because I sometimes can go three or four days. I don't have coffee. I drink a really specific kind of coffee and, um, you know, or a couple kinds of like coffee that, but I'm really sensitive about what, how they're stored or how the beans were stored before right. they went into, into processing, you know, and they ended up in a cup. Um, but you know, I have found that, you know, and, and also my rule that a Dr. Pat rule is that if you have coffee, you have to have two equal glasses of water to clear that one cup of coffee from your liver. Wow. And then what you, if you put cream in your coffee, you know, and, or drink it on the lighter side, if it's uh, like light, really light, then you have to add four same glasses of water to clear that one cup of coffee out of your liver. Um, <laughs> and so Incredible. that it can be processed, processed better. And if you put sugar, you can add two more cups of coffee, the same, same size cup of coffee yeah. in order to do that. So it really needs to be you know, so it's processing your liver and it helps for it to be diluted, you know, yeah. for the such, but, um, the, I always say when someone tell, they always call that a caffeine hot headache. And, um, and it's just like from the liver, cause it's trying to like, you know, yes. it has something that coffee offers it, you know, but it, you also have to take a look at what the source is and the mold and, um, you know, and other factors like in, in the cat, if like the caffeine. So I always just say, it wasn't the caffeine that was really the issue. It was what the beans were sprayed with that you're drinking, right. you know, so that when it went, so that no bugs would be on it. I mean, you wouldn't know there are bugs on it if they chopped it up anyway. I mean, no. that's, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and you yes. distilled it, but, but that's yeah. a lot of that, what that's from. So I understand as so like, sometimes I'll, I just stop drinking coffee. I don't feel for it. Um, mm. But, you know, and I, but I don't have that. It's the same thing. Like when somebody has a hangover, like if they go out and have, yes. you know, they decide they have a little bit too much, well, I always say that that's indicative that your liver is congested and you need to do some level of detoxification or tonification so that the liver can handle the toxins better. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then, you know, so, I said, so, you know, that's something that I do that I talk to and speak to because I have a 10 day detoxification program um, that I help people out with, you know, so that, you know, we can take a look at what is it, you know, like how much time do you do? And I, they offer sometimes people do detoxes for like a month. I never do that because I want to like, you know, I don't want to shock the body. What I want to do is I wanted it to get better and I want it to tonify. So it's, it, it improves the function, not necessarily always stresses it. And I think if somebody's yes. that toxic on a 28 day tox detoxification, it's better to do them in 10 day stents as opposed to doing them in like 30 days. Makes straight sense. In a row. Yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Dr. Pat, we could, we could spend hours literally talking about this subject. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I'm fascinated listening to you. Um, I, I'd like you to, to share with the listeners, how could they get in touch with you or how can they get started um, on one of your programs or what's the best way for them to do that? Well, the best way is um, to reach out to me directly. Um, right. And that way, um, there is a way to reach out to me on my website. It's called Health Team Network. Dot com. Um, that website is being updated at the present. So if you have access to LinkedIn, LinkedIn is how we met. Um, LinkedIn is a good way to find me as uh, Dr. Pat um, at you know, Dr. Pat Ballone, uh, in uh, LinkedIn. 
and direct message me there would be a perfect place to do that. Um, my calendar, um, if you buy my book in the back of my book has all my contact information, um, right. in it. Um, but my, you know, to jump on a call with me is very easy. Uh, and that link, you know, would be, um, meet Dr. Pat, nothing's, there's no punctuation in that part of it. And doctor is abbreviated. So D it's, uh, meet M E E T D R for doctor Pat P A T dot. A S like as an as dot M E forward slash H as in Harry T as in Tom and as a network. Right. Um, and you know, that's a good link to you know, like, just hop on, say hello, love to get acquainted with you. Um, and, you know, and then we can do a, a short assessment to see where you're at and, um, and whether we're a good fit. And if we're not a good fit, I promise you, I will find somebody who you can work with. You know, that that oh, would be, wonderful. you know, because I, I think it's when you, someone says, oh, we're not a good fit. You're going, well, what do I do now? <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I just don't like to, I, I don't like to leave people hanging and I want to make yeah. sure that, you know, you, you got somebody who's got their back and that Fabulous. you're going in a good direction. So it's, um, you know, meet Dr. Pat that me forward slash um, H T N. Um, and that's a good way to just jump on my calendar with me and, um, and let me know that, you know, we can, you can say that you heard me here when we get on the call and it's just an informal, right. get acquainted type thing. Well, I'll put all that in the show notes as well. And awesome. are there Thanks. any other places where people can connect with you other than LinkedIn? Um, I have a Facebook page, you know, and I'm on Facebook, um, and I have Instagram. I rarely right. ever use, um, you know, um, the little duck thing Twitter. <laughs> you can see thanks you it's a, thanks a lot you're reading my mind it's a bird um, not a duck <laughs> oh, i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay i just you can see how often i use it um, yeah. <laughs> you know but you know but i like you know the the linkedin you know because i what i my goal and you know i have a couple of big goals and my goal is to help people have better information so that they can make better decisions solid decisions about how to move forward with their health and their well-being and their mindset and how to get the best out of life physically emotionally emotionally spiritually yeah. the whole thing and i help people you know it's just like it's simply i help people and i help people have optimal health and mm -hmm. well-being you know with superior um, mindset and wellness initiatives and that's you know the you know my bottom line and that's what gets me up every morning and that's what you know uh, propels me to do podcasts and talk about you know like in all the possibilities because there's yeah. tons of them out there there's sure. and there are some exactly just for you perfect perfect yeah. well if you if you like linkedin it may be worth well i don't know when it's going to happen sometime this year we will all have the facility for LinkedIn audio, you know, social mm -hmm. audio yeah. is becoming very big. Right. So um, maybe once we both get it, maybe we could have a little show on there and get people to come and listen and um, talk about health and well-being. That will be a cool thing to do. Yeah, for sure. I would love to do that. You know, I just so enjoyed you and so enjoyed being here on your show. It's like being home. Thank you. It's like what? It's like being home. <laughs> oh, fabulous. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you very much. And I've really enjoyed listening to you. You have so much wisdom around this topic. Um, really, you do. There's, there's a great affinity um, around this topic for me and where I've been in my life. And I hope the listeners have really, really enjoyed it. I hope they come and check you out. Where can they get the book apart from Amazon? Is there any other places you prefer them to go to? No, Barnes and Noble. They can get it digitally, but you know, by yeah. hard copy is the it's seriously the best. Yeah. Um, and it, it's the best option because you can keep on going back and then you can track your scores. And when you um, finish a score, you can pop in and check in with me. There's a specific scheduling link in the book for people who come from the book to chat with me. I, I'll Perfect. know that you, you have that. And then I'll communicate to be able to, because I need to be able to see your scores from, you know, the questionnaire that's in there. 
And right. that covers all the aspects of it. And if anyone has any question, they can, you know, they can reach out to me, for instance, on an email or better yet on my, um, in which you can get on my uh, website, but on the, my website, when it opens up, if you scroll down, there's a picture of a microphone. And if you click on the microphone, you can ask me, you can verbally ask me a question. Oh yes. I it saw that. Yeah. You yeah. Can and record it gets a message. Yeah. 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 And it Very comes cool. directly to my email and then I can answer you straight back. Perfect. Oh, that's wonderful. And that, that, Technology and I love is great. When yeah. And, I, and I love talking. I've talked to people all over the world. I mean, and, and, and that's been such a special, um, you know, the, the first time I ever used Zoom, I just went, where are you from? <laughs> it was, you know, but, you know, now it's just like, and I was like, couldn't figure out how to get the thing up. But, you know, but technology has, you know, really shifted so much, yes. you know, and how yes. you, how you interact with people. Um, and, you know, and, and the other thing is, is that I always appreciate, you know, um, the line of like, what you see is what you get. Um, and so when people have that, you know, and I always use the line, the, the phrase, my house is your house. So when, you know, when you spend time with me and um, someone's mentoring and coaching with me on, on one of my programs um, that we design, because they're very individually designed per person um, to their needs and like length of time and goals and all that other stuff like that. Yes. Um, then, you know, my house is your house, you know, and you have uh, access to me 24 um, seven. and you know, time zone permitting, like if I'm sleeping or something like that, yes. <laughs> you know, but, but, but I do love to be able to, it gives me a lot of uh, satisfaction to see people, you know, be happy and do it, having fun and thriving, yes. you know, and taking like, you know, why struggle when you don't have to? hundred percent, hundred percent. Love it. There was one last question I didn't ask. I, I can't remember if it came out. I know you moved around a bit around the US. Are you now in Florida or in Boston area or? I am on a kind of a sabbatical-ish type experience this summer and I am in the Gulf of Mexico. And wow. so um, in about an hour and a half east of New Orleans and it's this very pristine old town that nobody knows about. Um, and people are just starting to discover because a lot of construction is starting here. So, um, you know, it's, it's the time to have been here to buy into this area it was about two years ago. Um, and, and like, and this is like a really target zone for hurricanes. So when they come up the Gulf, this is like a pinpoint where they usually land, but I'm here for the summer. The Gulf nice. of Mexico here is absolutely tremendous it reminds me of the mediterranean without the glamour and glitz of the yes. coastline of france you know or in italy but the um it's just it's really this the water looks very pure from here the sand is like really refined and it's very it's easy to walk on and it's easy wow. to spend time i'm about a half mile away from the beach you know here and so um i thought it'd be a perfect place to reset you know, a lot of um, some, you know, work that I'm going to be doing and some writing. I'm in the process of writing a new book. Um, uh, and uh, the working title right now is like, listeners can tell me if they like it or not. Who does that anyway? <laughs> and so I, and so I'm targeting, you know, I, I have two ways to take that. I can be all the Airbnbs I ever stayed in, <laughs> um, or it could be about, you know, who does health that way? Who does health? you yes. know, in a way that's easy, you know, it's affordable. Um, it gets you unstuck and it gives you the best life you've ever had. Mm. And it, it, it's just like, and it can consistently deliver, mm. you know, it's just like, you know, how do I do what I do? I'm very consistent at what I do, you know, right. to have, so people can have even more health and have, you know, be happy uh, and be able to live their lives the way that they dreamed of having them originally. Thank yeah, you great. so much, Dr. Pat. Um, really you. appreciate you, everything that you're doing to help people. Absolutely awesome. I wish you so much success. I hope Thank lots you. of listeners will reach out to you, connect with you, get on your program, buy the book and improve their lives. Um, bless you. Thank you. And if you are ever in the United Kingdom, for whatever reason, do let me know. We'll, we'll hook up uh, for some nice bit of lunch together. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. That'd be really great. I would love that. All right. Bye for now and take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe, and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.